Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's going to be, I think there are going to be top AOA decks that are going to give every single coded deck a problem. But you're talking about a very specific set of cars needing to, to be together. And from what I've seen, the average across the board cards that I've seen in AOA are going to get absolutely smoked by high amber generating coda decks that have tons of actions and don't need creatures anyway. <laughs> now, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this question because it was, it was kind of a thought that I had and I had expressed to uh, one of my guys and, and that I play with pretty uh, consistently. Does this make the rise for NASCAR decks to just be even better? That's the thing I said in the chat now. Like, uh, so when I was in Denver, um, I think NASCAR or Amber Rush, to be more specific, was the most common theme deck that I've seen. Uh, the why of that is they're really easy to get. There's thousands of them in the secondary market because basically one really good untamed line of twelve creates a NASCAR deck. So there's tons of good un untamed sets of twelve. You don't need a lot of support to the other two houses. If it does actually do well at supporting the net of the untamed set, it's even better. Um, but yeah, with bait and switch not being a thing really to look for, which is, you know, almost all the shadows extra you're playing against at a vault, um, knowing you're not going to get comboed off super early for seed. The biggest thing is the, the reason why I think NASCAR is going to skyrocket is Basically, in the meta right now, to go to a vault tour with a NASCAR deck, you had to check certain boxes. You'd be like, if I want to win a vault, I need good artifact control. Yep. I need key cheats because I don't want to be bait and switched off of my big amber push turns. Both of those two things, yes, two mesh protects is still there, but that's uncommon. Both of those two things are just gone. So now I can look for, hey, what's a 40 E expected amber deck or whatever other metric we're using, what's, what's a deck that has a ton of uh, amber pips on it? A couple, like maybe a key cheat. Maybe I don't need a key cheat anymore. That's another thing I might not need to look for as bad now. I don't have to worry about artifact control, so I just want 36 cards that are going to generate a butt ton of amber, and I'm going to play them as fast as I can. Yep. And, and that might have a chance to actually show prevalence in a vault, because... We don't know. We we people had legitimate reasons they could not bring that to the table yesterday, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I mean, it, you know, obviously with lands out there, yeah, you had yeah, to, like you had, you had to, to have artifact, artifact control, control, and it's normally mind. more than one. So that's two to four cards that you're sacrificing in your deck that would have be generating amber that you couldn't have. Uh, one thing I will say is AOA has, at least in in my opinion. And you can tell me yours here because you've you've seen the cards. Um, I've seen all the cards. I think I know about uh, fifty percent of the set now. So yeah, I'm I, mean, I think on I know it. more than that. But either way, I I feel obviously uh, AOA has focused less on steel. Um, mm -hmm. And you know what? Let's just go through all the houses real quick, just for funsies, and we'll get yeah. both of our our pre AOA opinions since you y'all are going to get decks tomorrow. Uh, yes, yes. Let's start out with. What do you want to start out? Who is it? Distant or no? Brabner. Brabner's first. B. Yeah, B. Brabner. Well, with so just talking about how we're feeling about it. Yeah, just uh, just what do you think about the new Brabner stuff, and what do you think about them? Uh, I'm loving the key cheat. You've got. I think they have a the actual American name now has been released. It's um, what is it? Might is right or something Midas like right. that. Yes, it was not uh, what key to the strongest or whatever. Yeah, like Law of the said, Strong. I think that's what strong, we all yeah. thought it was. Yeah, Might Makes Right. That is an amazing key cheat. It's amazing because you get to use the creatures, then sack the creatures, then forge the keys. So you have the amber. The other thing that Brobnar is actually going to excel to some extent is, um, is going to be um, amber control in some weird ways that are going to be more effective inside this set. Iron Obelisk, Obelisk is a lot more live because you have a common 11 power creature. You have a common eight power creature and you want them anyway because of might makes right. So you're going to see those kind of flourish in top decks. Pile of skulls stays. Um, there's another artifact that's if you can pair it with iron obelisk makes things crazy expensive. Yep. Um, I can't remember the name of that artifact, but basically for every five power creature or higher that you have there are your opponents goes artifact, uh, 
keys cost one more and that does the same for them to you. But if you're running a Brobnar deck, if especially paired with something like Sanctum, their keys are going to cost a lot more than yours. Yeah, and uh, here's the fun part that we discovered over the weekend. Brobnar can burst now. Flex is a thing. Um, there's also... Foozle. What's the other... What is it? Foozle. He's a five-power creature when he reaps. If an enemy creature was destroyed this turn, gain one. Uh, he had a nice Brobnar set out there. Uh, basically yeah, so, wiped I mean, my that's board. a do fairy that's almost guaranteed to get to actually be used once effectively. Yeah, he wiped my board, uh, reaped with him, played the Gengar Chief to ready him, couldn't fight, so he reaped with him again because all my stuff's dead mm -hmm. because Brobnar has a lot of, uh, you know, they're big and meaty and they stick around. Um, and then he played the Drummer Knot to bounce the Gengar Chief to play him next to Fuzel again. To then a leap for another two, that was a key. <laughs> so well, and, and also don't forget on top of the uh, the the new um, amber uh, the key cost going up card, they still have burn the stockpiles and screech bombs. So they kept two of their better amber denials, and they also get what I think is a better version of Crump. Uh, the new one's a five power creature. That it's a fight effect lose one. He doesn't have to kill the creature. So if he fights into elusive, that's amber crush of one just for burning someone's elusive. That's a way better version, especially if you can land into the fray on that guy. You can amber crush six of your opponents amber if they set up wrong with a bunch of elusives in in certain games. And Shadow still has a ton of elusives. Mars still has a ton of elusives. Um. There's a chance that, oh, I got to find his name now because he's just too good not to say his name. I think his name is Groke, G-R-O-K-E, Groke. Fight effect, lose one amber. Into the fray means he can fight up to six times if you landed on him. That is a lot of amber just being straight up crushed. Those are both common cards. You're going to see both of them in a lot of decks. That is serious amber removal from literally out of nowhere because they can play Grok, play into the fray and you can lose six amber if you're in a bad situation so brobnar step up or step down definite step up 100 percent. most of that in my opinion is because of the key cheat um but they were really low ranked in coda they're probably six out of the seven house in my my opinion as far as top competitive play <laughs> was, was I, your other one sanctum yeah, Sanctum and Brobnar kind of tie there at the bottom. I kind of go 6A, six 6B. Six yeah, I, I think, honestly, I would be 6. 6 is Brobnar for me, because I think they actually did. Because there is though, some really good Amber Crush in Brobnar that doesn't exist in Sanctum, I, I probably have Brobnar ahead of Sanctum and Coda, competitively. Let's move into Dis. How did you feel Dis. about them? Um... I can go into the exact reasons here in a minute, but I think so. This, in my opinion, is top Coda House. There are a lot of fantastic decks out there, and the reason they're fantastic is because of this. So I'm going to talk about five cards that make this happen. Why is it so good? Control the weak, arise, gateway, succubus, ember <laughs> We've all played against those. Those all give us nightmares at times. All five of those cards are gone. <laughs> yep. That's, I almost don't care what they added to this. I don't know how you replace those five cards in this, in this, not immediately like dropped two to three, maybe four ranks in competitive play. Like one of those that I just talked about is probably like, is, Definitely the best card in the game right now, hands down. Like especially now, Ember Imp or Coda. <laughs> no, no, control, the, control week. the week. Yeah, like that's. I mean, it already probably was anyway, because I I got into arguments about how LA is more of a game winning card and da da da. Those arguments are all gone. I have no more arguments that against Control the Week being the best card in the game. Yeah. <laughs> um, My single argument was destroyed today. Yeah. <laughs> so we get a lot of interesting stuff in. Dis this time around, we get the uh, the the bronze the key imps, 
the bronze, gold, and uh, I've seen silver. a lot of talk about the M's. They're not um, really I, that impressive. They don't impress.